Now I've been using Linux for over 20 years, but I remember one of the really frustrating things about first starting out is having Linux here in front of you, you know, like, hey, I installed it in a virtual machine, it's booted up, but now what? I have absolutely no idea how to do anything, much less like play around and figure it out. What do I even start with? I understand that frustration. And in this video, we're going to learn how to navigate the file system really easy. Switch directories, create directories, delete directories, move around list directories, all of those things. So you can play around and actually do that thing that everybody says, like, just do it and just figure it out as you go. Well, you need to be able to do the basic things so you can figure stuff out. That's what we're gonna learn right now. Now I'm here in my Ubuntu Mate box and I have a terminal window open. I created a folder and I put some stuff in it just so I can show you kind of what a folder looks like. And the first thing I wanna do is type ls-a for all. And this is going to show us the files that are in our current working directory, which is actually called working. That was a coincidence. That wasn't my plan. But uh, in this directory, this is our current working directory. And there are a number of files, a number of folders, and some other things that may not be as clear as you'd think. So first of all, we have a file named file name. We have a file named a file name called file name.txt. We have this file, which is called dot I was hiding, and I'll show you why that's called that in a second. And then we have two folders, one named test and one named test. One of them is capitalized, one of them is not. And that's one of the first very important things to note when you're in a Linux system, case matters. So you have to make sure that if it's on all lowercase thing, you reference it all lowercase, if it's capitalized, if it's all caps, case matters. So a capital T and a lowercase t are different characters in Linux. In Windows, they are treated the same. So capitalization doesn't matter, but that's not the case in Linux. Linux is case sensitive. And so that's how we can have two different folders, one capitalized and one not. And they're completely separate. They're valid. This won't cause any problems. It's just how Linux works. Now, if I just type ls, we're going to see it shows fewer things, right? Here we don't see this one that says I was hiding. And that's because any folder or file in a Linux system that starts with a period. So like that's the first character of the file name or folder name. It won't show when you type ls. You have to do ls minus a in order to show all of them, even hidden files. This is just a really nice way to keep your folder looking tidy. You can have a whole bunch of dot files in there, but when you just do an ls, you only see the file names that don't start with that. It's more convenient and uh, for cleanliness than anything else. A dot file has no other special characteristics about it other than it doesn't appear when you type ls on its own. Now, the other two fancy files in here, one is dot and one is dot dot. And these actually files was the wrong name. These are folders. The folder that is just a dot, that is current directory, okay? Dot dot is the parent directory. And if we change to those directories, that will allow us to use that as a relative uh, directory. So if I wanna go to the parent directory, I can type cd dot dot and change directory to dot dot is going to get us there. And now we are in uh, the folder above working. So if we type ls, we can see here is that folder called working uh, that we were just in. To go back there, we will type cd working. And then we're back in the working folder or the working directory inside our home directory. And home directory is another thing I want to show you. This is another special character. It's the tilde. And it's generally in the upper left hand corner of your keyboard, like to the left of the one key. And you probably have to press shift to get to it. It's called the tilde. And it's just that little squiggle. And that is a shortcut for my home directory. Okay, so if I were to type CD to tilde, and press enter, no matter where I am in the system, it's going to take me to my home folder, my home directory, tilde. Now, where is that? Well, I'm glad you asked, because if you type PWD for present working directory, it will tell you what directory you're currently in with an absolute path. Okay, so we are in the forward slash home forward slash S powers folder right now. And that's the same as tilde, right? So we can say CD to and type the whole thing out, and it's going to take us to the exact place that we already are. Or we can type CD to tilde, it'll take us to the exact same spot. And that works like, let's say we're in the etc folder, okay? If we type CD tilde, it's going to take us back to our home directory. So PWD, we're back in our home directory. Now there's one more shortcut, 
let's say we are in the user folder. Okay, so if we do PWD, now we're just in the user folder. If we were to just type CD all by itself and not give it an argument and press enter, that's another shortcut to get us back to our home directory. Okay, so we can type, we can get back to our home directory in three ways. We could type CD home as powers. We can type CD tilde, or we can type CD, oops, not excess. We can type CD and just press enter and it'll take us to our home directory directory. And that is these two ways we can refer to our home directory. This is the absolute path. This is a shortcut. And then a dynamic path or a relative path is something like, let's say we were to go back into the working folder. So we're now in, let's do PWD. So our present working directory is forward slash home forward slash S powers forward slash working with a capital W Remember, case matters. Okay. So now you know how we could get back to our home directory. We could type CD tilde. We could type CD home as powers and type it all out. We could just type CD and then hit enter, or we can type the relative path of CD dot dot, which is what I did in the first place, right? And that means change directory to our parent directory. And our parent directory is always the one above where we are. So we're in home S powers working. So if we type CD dot dot and press enter, it should take us back to our parent directory, which is home S powers. So let's do that, hit enter and look at that. PWD now, we are in home as powers. So that's how we can get around the file system using CD and those special character or that special character tilde, the relative thing dot dot. And that's going to be in every single folder. So if we do LS minus a here, first of all, there's going to be a ton of files in here because remember I said that the way we keep our, our directory looking clean is with these hidden dot files and dot folders. Uh, but if we look up at the beginning, we have dot dot and we have dot. So these are always going to be in every directory because a dot just means the current directory and dot dot means the parent directory. So any directory you're in, if you type CD dot and press enter, you're in the same directory. So if we go into working directory, we type CD dot, same directory. We haven't changed because dot means current directory. And that will actually be more important later on when we start referencing files in our system. But just know that dot means the current directory and dot dot means the parent directory or the directory above where we are right now. Now I'm going to clear the screen. I'm just going to type clear. And if we type ls dash L, this is another flag, and this will show us information about the files and folders in here. Now, you probably noticed earlier that when I typed ls, the test folders here were in blue. That's how I knew that they were different than the ones that are just in white. But there was no way for me to know exactly that they were folders versus files just by typing ls. Because a lot of times, especially if you connect over the network, you won't get these fancy color codes to tell you what's what. But if you do ls minus l, which which stands for like a, a more verbose listing, it's going to show you some things like this D at the beginning of what type of file it is, is going to show you that this is a directory. This is a directory. This with a dash is just a regular file. It's not a directory. And like I said, they're color coded here, uh, but they're not always going to be color coded. But if you do LS minus L, that's always going to show you the information. So you can tell if it's a file or a directory. And you can also combine these things. So we could say ls dash la, and that's going to give us a long listing. That's what the l is for is a long listing of all the files. So ls dash la is going to show us all of the things in here, including the I was hiding file. And we know it's a file because if we look over here, there's a dash, there's no D for directory, but these, the dot and the dot dot, these are both directories in the folder itself. So these are just ways that we can use LS to get more information about the folders that we're in. Now, one last bit of LS knowledge that I want to show you, and I don't use this very often, but if you do LS dash capital R, it'll do a recursive listing of everything from here down. So it'll show us all these plus everything inside test and everything inside this test and everything inside there, if there's other folders in there. So let's actually clear the screen, clear and do LS dash capital R and it's going to show us all of the things that are in here. So this is the 
first level is the file that we've seen before. And then inside the test folder, there's nothing. There's nothing inside the test folder. Inside the capital T test folder, there's another folder called folder two. And then this will go even further. It'll say inside here, inside test folder two, there's another folder called nested folder. And there's a file called thing two. And there's a file called thing. And then lastly, it'll go all the way into that nested folder and show you that there's actually nothing inside that nested folder that is inside folder two, which is inside folder test with a capital T. Whew. So this recursive listing will show us all of that stuff as we go down. And just like the others, we can combine them. So we could say ls dash a for all of them, including the dot files, capital R. Actually, let's clear the screen before we do it, just so we don't get confused. ls dash a capital R. And this will give us all of the files in those things. So we're going to see the dot and the dot dot in every single folder, because remember that is in every single folder. And we'll see the hidden files. Boop. We'll see that here in the test, there was a folder called folder two. And inside this folder, test with the lowercase t, there was a file called hidden file. So that's right in our lowercase test folder too. So again, that's one more way that we can get more information using ls. Now I want to start doing some fun stuff creating and deleting files. So let's clear the screen one more time. All right, so now, ls, these are the files in here. Let's say we wanted to remove a file. Well, for that we use rm and then the name of the file, file name. And now if we do ls, it's gone. It's that easy, it's actually, yikes, it's gone. Let's say we wanted to create an empty file. We would say touch file name and do ls and there it is file name is back but this is a different file right i created this fresh after i deleted this one up here so if there is anything important in this file called file name when you do rm file name it's gone so you have to be really careful rm is a powerful powerful tool because it will remove it and it's just gone all right so i created that again uh we can do the same thing with folders but we don't actually touch to create a folder to create a folder we would say mkdir folder one. Okay. And now if we do LS, we're going to see we've created an empty folder one. And then to remove that, we would say RM DIR folder one. And now if we do LS, we'll see that's gone. So to create files and delete files, we can say touch and RM. And for folders, we do MKDIR and RMDIR. It does get a little bit confusing here because the RM command, while that removes files, you can also remove folders with it if you do it recursively. Aha, that's a scary command, but let's look at that really quick because it's important to know that RM can also remove files. And honestly, I use that more often than I use RMDIR uh, because it's, it's fewer things to type and it's usually pretty quick. So I'm here and I will, let's see, I'll make another folder. So MKDIR folder two, and I can say, if I just say RM folder two, it's gonna say, I can't do that, it's a directory. But if I say RM, dash R for recursive, and this is a, a lowercase r for recursive with the RM command, folder two, it'll be like, okay, yeah, no problem. I'll recursively delete everything in there. So that's a powerful, powerful command is the dash R because it will remove recursively a folder and everything in the folder. Okay, so that's very powerful. What I often use the RMDIR for, here, I'm gonna clear the screen again, do an LS. I will often say RMDIR if I want to remove an empty folder. And the reason I do it this way is you'll see, it'll say I can't remove the directory because the directory is not empty. So RMDIR will only remove empty directories. Now, if I would say, oh, it's not empty, what's in it? And I say LS, TST, or test, and whoa, there's nothing in there. What the heck? Why isn't it showing me anything that's in there? but ls minus a test. Oh, that's right. There's a hidden file in there named dot hidden file. So if I were to, to have done rm minus r, I would have accidentally erased more than just a folder. I would have erased a hidden file in there. So I will often do rm dir if I'm erasing an empty folder or an empty directory, and I want to make sure that it really is empty. All right, so that's usually the only thing I use RMDIR for. Otherwise, I'll just do RM minus R test, and then it's gone, okay? So I've deleted it because I said recursive, even if there's a file in there, it's just gonna bam, erase it. Now, we're almost done, but the other things I wanna show you is how to move and copy something. So if we want to copy a file, it's CP. Now you may notice most commands in Linux are very short, like two letters, RM, LS, 
CP, RM, and that's just because the early Unix folks who designed it want it to be as efficient as possible with typing, right? I find it very convenient. Once you learn them, it's less to type. Like if you've used Windows, um, oh, what is the Windows shell thing where like the commands are like this long, that can be really frustrating. Whereas a really short commands are very nice to type because it's just a couple letters and bam. Anyway, so we're here, we can say copy and then the source file. So file name and the destination is going to be file name copy. And if we do ls, we can see we have file name and we have file name copy. And this is just a copy of the file itself, okay, and all the contents of it. So if this was like a, a big text file, we would have now two copies of that big text file. Now, if we wanted to move it, we could say move file name underscore copy. And I want the destination to be the test folder, okay? So if I say move file name underscore copy to test and press enter, if we type ls, it's not here anymore. But if we type ls, test, we can see, ah, see, now it's in there because we've moved it into that folder. But move is also used for one more thing. Let's type ls, what's in here? We have file name and file name.txt. Let's say we wanted to rename file name to file name.doc, like it's a Microsoft Word document. We would use move for that. We would just say move file name to file name.doc. And if we type ls, we'll see now it's there. And really, renaming and moving are the same thing, right? We're moving it from a file named file name to a file name file name dot doc. So it makes sense that there's not a rename command because move does the same thing. It just moves it from this file to this file. And all we're doing is changing the name. We're not changing the actual location of where the file lives. And then lastly, if we want to get really fancy, let's clear the screen. We can use wildcards or globbing is actually what it's called. All right. So let's see ls we can do things like ls star and this is going to give us a directory listing of everything in this folder so these two things and then everything in the test folder right but let's say we just wanted to see everything that starts with file name we could say ls file name dot star well now it's just going to return the two things that start with the name file name okay and that happens to be dot doc and .txt. So we can use the glob as a wild card to kind of fill stuff in, right? We can say ls star dot star, and we should get the same results because what star dot star means is anything will match this before a dot, and then anything will match this after the dot. And so it's file name dot doc matches because it's file name dot and then doc, but also file name dot text matches because file name and then the dot and then txt. But notice est did not match because there's no dot, right? There is no, if it was, if the name of the folder was test.folder, well, then it would, Let, let's move it. Let's say move test to test.folder, all right? And now if we do ls star dot star, now it's gonna show us the contents of it because it has a dot in the middle. All globbing does is just allow us to kind of use a wildcard for anything past that. And it doesn't have to be just a dot. It could be ls star dot t star. And that should just return one thing, which is file name dot txt. Because file name dot doc after the star or after the dot, there's not a t, right? We specified the dot t in the middle and anything on either side, but that only matches file name dot txt. It does not match file name dot doc. I know I threw a whole lot of like, these commands and going back and forth and creating folders, deleting, moving, renaming, all that stuff. I just did that because if you ever get that command line paralysis where you just like get a keyboard and you're at the terminal window and you don't know what to do, now you can do stuff, right? LS, CD, uh, move stuff, remove stuff, create stuff, copy stuff. Uh, see if you can copy a folder full of stuff from one thing to another. Hint, you can, but you have to do copy dash capital R so it will recursively copy. Otherwise you can't do it with just a copy command, but that's the kind of stuff I want you to play with. So you get comfortable doing stuff on the command line with files and folders and stuff like that. Anyway, learn everything, including this, <laughs> do what you love and be kind. I'll see you at the next video where we're gonna learn more about Linux. Oh, and if you're watching this, when you finish this course, let me know what is the next sort of thing that you would like to learn in the Linux world or the tech world, because I'm going to complete this Linux Essentials course. But after that, what are you really interested in learning about? Let me know in the comments so that I can plan the next stuff that we'll learn together. See you next time.